Footage in state history reassessed. Part 1. The Landscape the estate of Whittingham has had a close link with the earliest inhabitants of this part of East Lothian. The Tipperine law connection is now well known. In his book, The Seven Ages of an East Lothian Parish, the Reverend Marshall Lang devoted his first chapter to the evidence of prehistory inhabitants in the parish. His second chapter looked in detail at the evidence of the early church with a reference to Whittingham recorded in 883, when the area was part of the Kingdom of Northumberland. But there is much more to uncover. Where is Whittingham? This is an excerpt of the 1832 map by William Forrest, three miles from East Linton to the north, one mile from Stenton. It is dominated by the south face of Tuprain Law, a mile to the north. The Jameson map. In February 2020, I published an article in East Lothian Life on Whittingham, its kirk, the state, and its people. There were four aspects of the recorded history that I identified as needing study. One had been prompted by the discovery of a map of the estate stored in a chest in America by descendants of a William Jameson. His grandfather was appointed estate factor in 1789 by the Hay family of Duns Castle, who had owned the estate since 1695. After James Balfour bought the estate in 1817 and decided to build his new mansion on the site of Howden Farm, which the Jamisons held as tenants, the eldest brother moved to Duns around 1824, while the second son, William, sailed to the New World. American descendants still possess the map. The severe of the map is not known. It was hoped that this map could lead to better understanding of the estate's development in the 18th and early 19th century. It shows the Howden farm buildings to the south of the Whittingham Water that site is now the location of the mansion house, built in 1817. The Lewis Garden map, estate map of 1759. This map is an extract based on the 1759 map by Lewis. It has been amended to show a realigned road that is mentioned in notes at the top of the map and these are dated for 1799 and refer to Forrest's map probably as part of his survey. The Gates Pillars. This is a photo of the two pillars at the north entrance of Lime Tree Walk leading to the tower. This is an excerpt of what the official listing says. Early to mid 18th century pair of Baroque gate lodges and giant gate piers, with East Lodge altered probably around 1820. The early 18th century date seems the more probable, when the commission would have come from William Hay of Drummeldsier, who inherited the estate in 1695, 
and could have occurred up to 1726 when he died. This is a photograph of the West Lodge adjacent to the gate pillars. Again, the official listing goes on to say the mid 18th century date would suggest that pattern books had been consulted. The patron would probably be Alexander Hay, who succeeded William's widow in 1752. We now know that Alexander moved his home from Duns Castle to Whittingham in 1752. The estate plan of 1759 shows the lodges completed. They are clear on the American map, which is why I have used this for this slide. The estate plans also indicate quadrant walls, although in two different positions. That of 1759 gives a shallow curve to the south. In here, possibly linked to the gate piers. Further adjustments to the line of the road appear to have been made by 1799. The American map conforms to the sketch attributed to William Forrest, which was added to the copy of the Lewis Gordon estate map of 1759. However, the 1832 map by Forrest still shows the road to the south of the Kirk and the Manse and running through the old village site. Follow this laser here, and this is the road running towards the old village to the site of the Kirk. I suggest there is now a strong argument that the gateway, associated lodges and pillars were erected by Alec Hay, who lived from 1701 to 1789. He had moved from Duns Castle in 1752 to Whittingham after trouble with the inhabitants of Duns. On his return, he constructed this gateway to Duns Castle, called the Pavilion Lodge, in 1774. So he was clearly a man who was keen to build gateways, as we have seen. The separate Whittingham estate records held in Dunn's Castle, record a expenditure containing receipts paid to a family called Nelson for masonry work in the period May 1753, note that date, to April 1754. A bill of £20 was also paid to a William Syme, a bricklayer, for a new well. A bill for £25 for 79,000 bricks was paid to a Thomas Melvin brickmaker in the year 1753. These are likely to have been part of the estate improvements from 1752 when Alec Hay made Whittingham his home. Further research 
on the history of the estate continues. End of part one.